Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It's hashtag Finally Friday, November the 6th. Have you had enough of this week yet? Well, we got a weekend around the corner. We'll get to that in a little while. We've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour or so. Glad to have you with us. We've got a couple of special guests talking about a very important event. That's coming up as well. But first, my co-host for today, flying solo, Frank Hooper. Thank you, thank you, Todd. Thank you. Happy Friday, everybody, man. And look, let's subscribe to the show. We're on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. Look up Houston Community College. We're also on uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, Snapchat. Let's grow the show and stay stay up to date on your latest campus news and new campus news and events. Well, you know, Frank, since we don't have Brittany this morning, she's got a, a break today. I think she had a doctor or a dentist appointment today. But uh, we do get a chance to talk a little sports. Usually we don't include Brittany in that conversation. We try to, but she just doesn't have a whole lot to say when it comes to that. This, this is true, which is shocking because Brittany has a lot to say about everything. So that, that, Well, that's, that, that's very shocking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's very shocking. But well, Frank, we're going to we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, uh, go in and take a look at what's coming up for the next half hour. We're talking about the Minority Male Initiative. That is happening, um, a symposium that's coming up. We've got uh, Armando Galvan Cruz's Student Life Coordinator, HCC Southeast. Also, Men of Honor advisory board member and a panelist for the men of color symposium and also kendrick gibson program manager hcc minority male initiative and the planner of the men of color symposium good after good morning i should say and great to have you with both with us on this friday morning good morning we, uh, I want to ask you first, let's go ahead and get started. Why don't you talk to us about some of the things you have coming up? First, why don't you tell us, uh, I'll start with you, Kendrick, if you can tell us about the Minority Male Initiative, what you guys are all about, and uh, in some events that you have throughout the semester, not just the one coming up. Okay, thank you. Uh, the Minority Male Initiative at Houston Community College started around about 2009. Um, the mission of the program is basically uh, we want to increase the retention rate, uh, the completion rate, and um, our uh, semester to semester as uh, far as uh, those students that are the persistence rate of those minority males. The program is open to all males of, uh, of well, for every HCC student, regardless of your gender, regardless of your, um, your background, but we have a large emphasis on um, Hispanic males and African American males. When we take a look at the data on a national uh, scale, we look and we see that those individuals that come into higher education or an education period have to overcome some of those, some challenges that other uh, ethnicity groups don't have to. So uh, what we want to do is we want to bring those students in at Houston Community College, pair them with mentors and connect them to different resources that HCC may offer or also um, uh, the city of Houston may also offer. So we connect them with external resources as well. Uh, different programs that we've had throughout the semester. Uh, we do a weekly meeting every Friday via Zoom uh, where we have a seminar. Uh, the different seminars just may change uh, depending on what the need for the students are. Uh, these past uh, weeks we've had anywhere from career services. We had an advising session where the advisor came in and talked about um, getting the guys together where they're pulling their academic transcripts so they can make sure that they're on the right path to their completion of their program. Um, we, we have, um, last week we had a couple of attorneys to come in and host a seminar to talk about criminal and family law for those individuals that may have uh, felons on their background, advising them how to gain employment, uh, if they wanna register the vote, if they're eligible to register the vote. So those are a couple of things that we've had, just some data, some weekly seminars uh, that we feel that, um, we may possibly want to give those guys life skills to make them successful. Uh, and of course, we got our, up, our upcoming event, which is on next Friday, which is our right. symposium, which is open to, to everyone at HCC. Kendrick, I want to ask you this. Over this past summer, there's been a lot of discussion and a major shift in this country to discuss mm -hmm. social injustice. Have your, have your groups and seminars been bringing that to light to talk with your members and have a discussion about what's happening across this nation right now? We have, we've, we've, uh, we've had different things to where we've, we've brought individuals to come in and talk about different things. Not only that, we understand not only the climate 
with uh, the social injustice, but also with the COVID-19 yeah. uh, has, has impacted our guys as well. So uh, we've had, uh, we did some wellness calls uh, throughout the summer where we did an individual just wellness check with each individual, just call them to see, hey, how are you doing? How is your mental um, state going? Do you need anything? Um, if you need some counseling. So uh, we've, we've definitely not only had people come in and talk to them, but we've actually had just uh, sessions where we've talked to the guys to connect them to different resources. So, yes, we, we have addressed that along with the COVID as well. What's been the reaction when you've been calling the members personally? Because I know we've had some uh, folks here from student services and they did an outreach effort over the summer to really call the students, try to bring them back into college. Many who had uh, scholarships waiting or financial aid waiting and the students seem to really appreciate the personal touch. What's been the reaction when you do make those phone calls? I would definitely say the same thing. They, they respond to the personal touch. So, the ones that we did, we were able to get in contact with, did really appreciate uh, someone reaching out to them. First of all, just asking how they were doing, how they were doing at this time. So it was a little bit of, of sympathy and, and empathy uh, that impacted those students. Um, so when we when we reached out to them, we did not only found out things that possibly were, were going on at HCC, but we also discovered external factors that some of them didn't want to come forth and talk about to anyone Right. Um, besides their advisor or someone that they was close to. So we were able to actually um, take a list, take a look at those guys and see what the, the other challenges they were having as well with those calls. You have a symposium coming up a week from today, uh, November the 13th. Yes. Maybe you can tell us uh, specifically about that. Yeah, so this will be our fourth annual Men of Color Symposium. We have been uh, doing this in conjunction with the University of Houston downtown, their minority male group, the Men of Legacy. Also in conjunction with San Jacinto Community College, we've added some different um, com community partners. So we've expanded uh, throughout the years. So we've partnered with uh, HISD, other ISDs, ascending to men from uh, HISD. And basically what we wanna do is we want to bring uh, the city of Houston together um, with those minority males and actually for one, let them see other positive males that are doing things that come from the same social economic background, communities and things of that nature to see, hey, you can achieve greatness, you know, regardless of where you come from. Not only that, from, on, from a uh, professional side, we do a professional track. We like to get those professionals together, like yeah. self, Armando, other uh, faculty and staff from HCC and other higher ed institutions to talk about best practices. What's going on at your school? What are you doing to recruit those guys? What are you doing to retain those guys? Um, what, what What's working for you? What's not working for you? How can we work together in, instead of saying, okay, when we go out and recruit someone, I want you to come to Houston Community College or somebody right. says, I want you to go to University of Texas. But we can say, hey, we've got a pipeline to, everyone's not gonna go to UT. Everyone's not going to go to AM. Everyone's not going to go to University of Houston. But if you start at University, I mean, at uh, Houston Community College, that pathway can connect you to those schools because they have those supporting uh, programs to help you once you get there. So that's the gist of the program. We are just, we're anticipating anywhere from 200 to 300 students. Normally, in the past, this would be on a campus. Uh, we've had up to like 500 uh, students. Um, or more attend this event, uh, but be, because of the capacity rate, with well, the capacity of the of the building, we've had to kind of shut it down. So with it being in a virtual uh, setting this year, we do understand that um, it's on a Friday. Some of those students may be in school. Um, they may have classes and things of that nature. So we're anticipating about 200 uh, students on next Friday to attend the event. Ken, if you would stick around, I'm going to move on and talk with Armando as well and bring him into the conversation. And Armando, uh, good to see you again, by the way. Uh, I know you're uh, still at Southeast College where you're already working in student life, but you're also involved with the Minority Male Initiative. And maybe you can tell us how you bring those two uh, aspects of your per professional life and being involved with this organization, how you bring them together. Well, well thank you, Todd, for the invitation. I do appreciate it. I remember the last time I was uh, interviewing with you, it was not in this environment. Uh, we were yeah, we were in a studio. So I'm glad to be here and happy Friday to everyone. Uh, as you mentioned, as a student life coordinator, we look beyond academics. 
So and we try to develop ACC leaders in, in our communities. And for us, Med of Honor is a great opportunity for all students that have a sense of community and belonging, and they want to be part of something like Men of Honor. And let's talk about the program and how it's grown at uh, the Southeast College and your involvement with that. Uh, that's a great question. I've seen a tremendous amount of young leaders develop different skills through the program. And many of them now are doing amazing things. Since I started as a student life coordinator, uh, most of them have finished their two-year degree and they're now in a four-year institution and even some of them already on the workforce and that's something we're looking for that they have that sense of belonging and community and beyond academics once they're done with their degree they can go ahead and do great things and you've uh, seen as you're as you're saying you've seen a lot of growth and uh in more engagement with the students overall i mean it it sounds like uh, that's a success story itself when you see um, a significant number of people graduating or completing that two-year program that's correct and and just the fact that they're uh moving ahead and just we have men of honor uh individuals that were there at some point and now they're mentoring other students and that's something we're looking for once you've completed your degree you can actually mentor other students that are interested on your career path so uh, i feel that that community building that we have on men of honor it's building and I want to I want to touch with both of you on this um, the mentorship program. I know throughout our life, many of us have mentors along the way. How important is it is? And I'll start with you, Kendrick, to have mentors for college students um, to get them through the two years. Because I imagine there are a lot of outside issues that are playing a role in every one of our students uh, completing their program. Yes, um, Todd. That's a that's a great question. Um, I definitely uh, think mentoring, mentorship is very, very, very important. Um, not only just for minority males, but I think just anyone going to college or anyone, you know, seeking to go into a professional uh, career needs some type of mentor. I'm pre pretty sure all of us have had, you know, different mentors throughout our life. But it's very important, especially when we talk about the minority males at Houston Community College. Like you said, a lot of those guys have external factors um, that are going on uh, besides school. Some, some of those guys, it's about survivals. It's yeah. about money. It's about transportation. So partnering those individuals with mentors to let, it, let them know, hey, I understand what you're doing, giving them that empathy. I understand what you're doing, but at the same time, um, I'm here to help you. You know, and so once we partner with them and give them those mentors, you know, the success rate is bound for that student to increase. Because for one, most minority males do not open up and let just anyone know what their problems are, you know. And so once we connect them with a mentor and they develop that relationship and that bond, then the walls kind of come down and they start, you know, um, telling them their needs or some of the things that they might not feel comfortable with telling their, their academic advice. Armando, I wanna ask you this, um, speaking of the outside pressures that many of our students face, let's talk about how COVID has uh, affected some of the students that you've worked with. Um, many students, what I'm hearing are underemployed, maybe their job hours have been cut, maybe their positions have been dissolved and they're unemployed. Um, you know, there, there's gotta be a lot more outside issues now because we're living in very trying um troubling times uh, uh, you know as we're going through the COVID situation i think that's correct uh we have multiple situations with students where they don't have the technology needed they're underemployed they're unemployed they don't have the resources that we're that they need to complete their degree and uh the men of honor initiative and the men of honor of color symposium uh, will not only give them the resources, but also give them the empowerment they need. Uh, something they sometimes they just need to ask for resources, and yeah. they they don't do it. So we're empowering them to do that. Um, let's talk about the symposium and the role you'll be playing in it, because you're also um, a panelist ne next week, and you'll be talking about the topic of resilience through education. That's correct. Uh, so as I was mentioning, the Men of Honor Symposium, it's going to empower our youth to fulfill their goals and their dreams through education. And some of the things I'll talk about, it's that 
our mentors are our experiences uh, can find them purpose. And I think purpose, it's a great way to build up on our, our dude. And yes, it's all about purpose and the goals we have in life. So um, I won't be here today if it was not by all the mentors that I have transformed my career. And I do believe that our youth needs to hear those empowering stories. Kendrick, you know, in marketing, testimonials are some of the most powerful things we can get across. There's nothing like word of mouth advertising. Mm -hmm. um, is, does that also translate into when you're reaching out to your members, having those, uh, you kind of mentioned the role models that in the mentors, mm -hmm. those play a big part in, in getting your point across. Oh, definitely. Um, and Armando can definitely um, can piggyback at any time and he can tell you that one thing that we do as advisors for the organization uh, with the group, we we get we try to encourage the guys Well, we encourage the guys to take ownership of the organization because they can actually go out as what you're saying, Todd, be a living testimony yeah. to another student and say, OK, it's not just Kendrick or it's not just Armando selling a program to them, but a student that receives a scholarship that says, hey, man, you may need to join this program because I didn't I didn't even know anything about it. And uh, this scholarship here helped me stay in school or this scholarship here helped me to um, to get books that I needed or I didn't have any transportation. The Men of Honor program showed me that ACC has um, a partnership with Metro or uh, I don't have any food. ACC has a food pantry. Right. Uh, you're, I definitely, um, they have to take ownership on that. But what we do is we do make them take ownership of the, of the program and tell them, hey, make sure that you reach out to guys and let people know. It's one thing for me to put a testimony out there, but if you see someone in uh in need and one of the one of our four and i didn't mention this earlier but the organization is built up on four pillars and uh, one of those pillars is brotherhood so that brotherhood piece is a part of that testimonial piece to go out and connect with a guy and you see someone that can um can benefit from the same thing that you've been benefited from definitely reach out to them the other three of course academics is is the most important piece because if they're not you know, meeting the um, the academic part of it, they can't be a part of right. the program or be a part of school. And then we do community service and also leadership. So with those four pillars, builds up the foundation of the uh, the Men of Honor program. For folks who want to get into, want to get involved with your program, maybe want to get some mentorship, how would they get in hold of you, Kendrick? Well, what they can do, we have a website. Uh, they can go to HCC. Um, and they can, in the search box, they can type in Minority Male Initiative Program, or they can just type uh, www.hccs.edu slash MMI, and it'll take them to the MMI page, and they scroll down, and it says sign up if you're interested. They click on, they fill that inquiry card out that comes directly to me, and I'll follow up with that individual. Kendra Gibson, we appreciate you being here. Armando Galvan Cruises, good to see you again. Thank you both. We look forward to seeing you again in the future. Good luck with your symposium next week. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Thank you both. We are going to move on to uh, Frank Cooper. We got a few. Uh, we got a few announcements to go over, Frank. Of course, the big announcement today. Huge announcement this morning. You know what the announcement is? I uh, let me scroll down real quick and I'll tell well, you. No, I, I, I guess you're, I was going to say the announcement is it's hashtag finally Friday. That's ah. the announcement right now. The weekend is almost upon us. You know, Frank, with a weekend comes sports. We're going to have a big weekend this weekend. Of course, uh, the big news this weekend, football locally, the Texans had to shut down their training camp or facilities because of COVID cases. But the question I have is, does it even matter? I mean, the 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 five straight losses have, have took us out. COVID didn't take us out. The five straight losses took us yeah, out already. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, COVID at this point just insult the injury. But um, yeah, it's, you know, I I really want these one percenters, these owners, the NFLPA to really sit down and like think about this. Like, look, this is one way we can eliminate all these cases and all these positive tests. Regulate four or five stadiums, create a bubble. Yeah. You're a nine billion. You're a nine billion dollar industry. 
make a bubble, relegate like eight teams or four teams in each state, and just and and, and playing divisions and don't travel. Yeah, like, it worked for the thing NBA. Is, yeah, 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 it, it worked for the NBA, and why not? Yeah, NBA, ML, uh, ML, MLS, WNBA, they all got it. They all figured it out. Yeah, just being a bubble, like you have the money to create these structures and these and these and these and these bubbles. Just do it already. Well, and you know, even MLB uh, did their playoffs in certain areas, and the World Series was held in one stadium. So, you know, I mean, it, it worked for them. Uh, but football is just going to do things their own way. I mean, you know what it's all about. It's all about the money sign. It's the dollar, you know, and it's a money making business. The revenue brought in. I mean, even if they're bringing in what twenty percent of the fans, they're still making a few dollars to pay the rent on their stadiums. That's that's true, and um, I know. In- I know in the colors ranks, the Pac-12 starts tomorrow. Yeah. I think Stanford already delayed their game because I don't know what the point is with college football right now. I really don't. You know, I I know that's money making as well, but you know, geez, wow. We just I you gotta look at safety too. So it's an interesting sport, but it'll be, you know, if the games go on this weekend, it'll still be interesting to see some of them. Yeah, I I think it comes down to to a lot of these big town colleges are in rural towns. AM's in College yeah. Station, Alabama's in uh, Tuscaloosa. You know, if you have all these big town power five programs, well, a lot of these rural towns, they they rely on the revenue that these colleges get from fans, ticket sales. Right. That's that's how that's how these cities survive cities survive for it. So for a lot of these towns, COVID is just a blimp on the radar because jobs are 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 at stake. So yeah, yeah. You know, I, I I try to have perspective when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I, it's just hard for me. It's hard for me to hear an argument about jobs being at stake when lives and health is being at stake as well. Yeah, you know, no, so. I get it. Yeah, I totally get it. Well, it's going to be an interesting to see how the rest of the season shakes out, how it'll go. It, it changes every day. Who knows? It'll be a surprise to us all. Um, one thing I do know, Frank, is today, today's the last day that you can register for the All In for HCC campaign. Please, man, please help our students. We have so many students who, who have lost their jobs, students who are just trying to figure it out financially, how to pay for, you know, pay for college. So, you know, for guys like us, faculty, staff members, let's let's pitch in. Let's pitch in. Um, you know, students need our support to graduate. Um, it, like you said, it ends today. To donate, all you got to do is go to hccs.edu forward slash all in for HCC to donate. That's right. And then when you do donate, hashtag it all in for HCC. And that way you'll let everybody know in social media that you're on board. Hey, uh, Rec Sports, they've got a lot of things going on. We were talking sports. Well, you can participate virtually. And today, today's the day that Frank loves because it is Twerk Fitness this afternoon. <sighs> I can't, I can't wait, man. I can't, I, I, we've been, we've been teasing this for the last couple of weeks now. And yeah. I feel like it was something that was, it was never going to happen, but now, you know, join us, you know, join the, the, the V sisters to register, uh, christian.andrews at hcs.edu or, and, and make sure the subject line is twerk or go to hcs.edu for slash rec sports. Um, IG and Facebook is also HCS athletics. Yeah, and uh, next Friday, the V Sisters will be on the show. So, Frank, see if you can be here as well. I don't care if I'm sick. I'm going I'm, I'm <laughs> to find gonna a way be, to be there. I, I wouldn't be miss it here. for the world. Hey, one thing going on, we've got a filmmaking series and uh, free virtual workshops. They have one next week with J.D. Shields, an award-winning winning film, TV, and interactive director and writer, share his her experiences as a writer for interactive in gaming media. Interested in that? Well, you can uh, register. It's noon to 2 p.m. Wednesday, November the 11th. The social media post for this show will have the information to register for that. And HCC Northwest has some community gardening tips, which I know Frank could probably use because he's now a homeowner. Yeah, you know, uh, and uh, my mom got on my case a couple weeks ago because I, I didn't apparently prune the pear tree. I didn't. I never heard the, the, the word prune before. But yeah, my pear tree struggling out there. So, but like you said, HC Northwest, um, they have workshops on how how to, about trees, planting, and, and caring of your plants. It's all virtual. It's safe. Um, Ten thirty to eleven thirty, Monday, November sixteenth. So, for more informa- information about that, go to hccs.edu 
four slash community dash learning dash workshops. Yeah, All this so info will be, you'll uh, learn about the trees, Frank. So make sure you attend that one. Keep your mom happy. I'm gonna I'm, I'm be a better plant daddy, I promise. Hey, so uh, HCC's Mail Center is making headlines. Congratulations in order for HCC's Mail Center, which was recently featured in the 60th edition of the official mail guide, AKA OMG, that's right. The publication of the Journal of Communications Distribution is read by more than 100,000 executives and managers in 177 nations worldwide in online in print edition. Ken Hoyle of HCC's highlighted uh, our mail center without walls during these unprecedented, unprecedented times. And they've continued to serve the college community at the highest standards with no boundaries. Congratulations to all of them. Frank, spring registration is underway right now. We wanna encourage our students to get out there and register early because we've, as usual, we've got four learning options for them. Absolutely. So the first option that we're going to talk about is online anytime. And it's just as it sounds, take classes online at any time. Um, option two is online on the schedule. So take classes online at a scheduled time. Uh, never come never come to campus, but log in at, at a specific time you select. Option three, we have flex campusing. Sign for in-person classes. So you choose to come to campus or participate online at a set time as well. These, these classes will be at a certain capacity. One, we have social distancing in these classes, it so won't be an issue at all. And the last option is lab-based courses. So critical hands-on skill-based learning will continue to be offered, but, sec but section, sizes, section sizes are smaller to allow for social distancing. Regardless of your option, all students have the same support, tutoring, student life, career counseling services, registration is open and you can now lock in classes today. Go to hcs.edu forward slash now. Yeah, main thing is register early with those options. The classes are smaller and uh, you wanna get the time that you want. So make sure you register early to have the best choices there. We've got a lot of services available to our students online. First off, the student virtual lobby. Uh, you can visit that by simply going to our homepage. You'll see, you can click right on it. You can get a Zoom meeting, a callback and a, or an email. Uh, no appointment for that is necessary, and they have extended hours. Uh, go to hccs.edu slash virtual lobby or just our homepage. Also, Frank, we've got virtual college transfer fairs. Those are going on. We've got a number of universities and colleges across the state involved. Absolutely. I know a lot of HCC students, you love your HCC uh, experience here, and we, and, we and we love you being here. But I know a lot of you guys want to move on to universities and, and you know, get that bachelor's degree, which... We are rooting for you guys. So schools like Prairie View A&M, Texas A&M, U of H and all of its branches, UT and all of its branches, and University of St. Thomas are all on the list for, the, for this transfer fair. So, so for, uh, to find out more information about the transfer fair and what colleges are involved, go to hccs.edu forward slash transfer fair. You, in the past, didn't we have you cover some of these? I know you, didn't you cover like one or two of those? Yeah, I cover two of them. I cover one of them in Spring Branch and I cover yep. one in, uh, in Katy Campus. Yeah, yeah. And they're usually very well attended. The the uh, people from the, the colleges will come out and speak with the students. This year, they're doing things differently because of COVID, but you can actually participate in discussions with the colleges and interact with them to get more information. So if you're interested in transferring to any of these colleges, make sure you attend, or you can watch the recorded version if you don't catch them live. Frank, that about wraps up the show for today. Monday, we've got Dr. Catherine O'Brien, Associate Vice Chancellor of College Readiness, who'll join us to talk about our dual credit program and someone from Rec Sports. Joe Harris, man, of the HCC Northeast Rec Sports Program who will tell us about a special project they're doing for the Houston Food Bank. This is a good time of the year for that because a lot of families are in need, you know, during COVID, you know, with people losing their jobs and, you know, not enough food to go around. So this is a yeah. good initiative. I can't wait to hear about it on Monday. Real quickly, Frank, if you picked a lock for a, a game this weekend, who would you pick? A lock. Uh, Pittsburgh against Dallas. Dallas is probably going to start their third, the third quarterback of the year. And yeah. Pittsburgh is undefeated and they are rolling and that defense is hot. So I, I see a decisive victory by Pittsburgh. Okay. And I'm going to pick, uh, I think, I think the Texans are, they're, they're going to beat the Jaguars. They got to, they got to. Yeah. They, they, Doesn't I, even I, matter anymore, but I'll, I'll go ahead and lock it in with the Texans. Yeah. Yeah. 
we'll see how that goes. Anyway, Frank, have a good weekend. Thanks for being here today. That was a pleasure, man. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you for our guest today. Y'all be safe and take care of yourselves out there. That's right, folks. Have a great weekend. Mask out. Get out. Enjoy the weather. I'm Todd Duplantis. He's Frank Cooper. We'll see you next week live Monday morning, 10 a.m. right here and up to the minute.